Well, hello there. Today we're going to write the Circuit Python Raspberry Pi Pico firmware for the smallest keyboard. In case you missed the build video, that's going to be linked below. All files, notes, etc. are available at the Hackaday project page. If you're building your own human interface device, you'll need Circuit Python installed on your Raspberry Pi Pico. Link below. Just copy the U2F file to the Pico. And this code also requires the Adafruit HID library and key code files. So go to the link below, download the Adafruit library for the circuit Python that matches your version and copy the slash lib slash Adafruit underscore HID files into your Pico's slash lib folder. And that should be what you need to install. All right, let's look at the code. Up top, we've got a few comments with the key matrix logical layout, so the rows and columns, the pin layout, so the pins as they're numbered on the board, the Pico pin names in CircuitPython, which are preceded by GP and then have a number according to the general purpose IO pin that they are, and the physical layout slash silkscreen. And then we've got the same for the modifier keys. One brief note about the keyboard is that there's currently no control alt delete functionality as there's no delete key. You can add this if you'd like. If you want it, I'd suggest implementing delete via shift and backspace and treat that as a special case later on in the code such that control alt shift backspace will send the control alt delete combination. So the modules this depends on are from CircuitPython time board digital IO and USB HID and then specifically from the Adafruit HID library, the keyboard and key code. Right off the bat, we sleep the board briefly briefly in order to ensure compatibility is maximized just in case the system you're plugging the keyboard into isn't quite ready for HID. Next we create the HID and then several lines of code are devoted to setting up the row, column, and modifier arrays. So the steps are to create an empty array followed by an array of the row pins. Then take each one of those pins, turn them into a digital I.O., set their direction, output or input, depending on what we're going to do with them, and then append the rows back to the row keys. Later on, we'll be grabbing the index of these and then matching that against a key map. Modifier keys can be enabled or disabled according to whether the modifier enable pin is set to high or low. This is probably overkill because the modifiers could be connected to either a constant high or low and then read via their own individual switches without an enable disable pin but the code here is handled in a consistent way then we've got a small array of modifier key codes so left alt left control left shift according to the physical keys on the keyboard and then we've got the array of key codes themselves following the physical layout of the board these are remappable it wouldn't match the silk screen note that if you're using the exact same board layout the none value values have no physical connection. And finally, we're at the main loop. So well true means this code will always execute. For the modifier enable switch, we're going to set that pin to high. Uh, again, probably a bit of overkill, but just placing it here for consistency with the rest of the way that the pins are treated. And then for R in rows, or for each row, set the row pin to high, and then read each of the columns as an input. And then if there is a key press detected in that column, the high row output will proceed across the switch closing the circuit and result in a high column input. So while a column input is still high, that means the user is holding down the key. So we're going to sleep the board very briefly before checking back. And then once they release it, we will establish which key is pressed by looking up the rows in an index and the columns in an index, and then performing a calculation to figure out which key that was in the array key map. Then we check and see if any modifiers have been pressed, and if any of them have been, we identify which one and send the key press in order to hold it down. Then we send the key press of the actual non-modifier key that we're transmitting, and then we release all of the keys that are pressed, so that key and its modifiers. And then we return the row that we've just looped through 
row R to a low state in order to prepare for the next row in the loop. The columns don't need to be reset in the loop because we're reading them as inputs. So if you're making a copy of this board, that's the recipe. And if you're making your own custom human interface device, I hope this helps you along using CircuitPython, the Adafruit key, keyboard libraries, key code library, and the Raspberry Pi Pico.